Now, whether you're a dog person or a cat person, I have something very exciting for you today. Now, you might already know that the docuseries Dogs Season 1 is out already on Netflix, but we have a Season 2 coming on July 7th, and that's not all. The very same day, we are getting Cat People Season 1. One. So again, whether you are a dog person or a cat person, there's some lovely stories here for you. I love getting to see this side of animals and see how they've truly touched the lives of others. Dogs season one is something I've watched several times over just for the, the content and getting to see the dogs. I've really enjoyed it. So I was really looking forward to season two. And of course, uh, for the addition of cat people. So I was lucky enough to speak with the creator and executive producer, Glenn Zipper, about the series, about them both, about what inspired them, which the story is absolutely heartwarming, by the way, about what fans can expect to see. Maybe there's some updates on some past animals that we have seen uh, and why he decided to make cat people, all sorts of great stuff. So I really hope you enjoy this interview. Um, before we dive into it, if this is your first time here, I'd love it if you take one second and hit that subscribe button. Uh, and if you enjoy the content, go ahead and hit that notification bell. All right, guys, let's talk to Glenn. Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Glenn, thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you for having me. Of course. How are you doing? Good? Yeah, I'm doing good. Need a little more caffeine <laughs> this morning, but you know, there's never enough caffeine. Yeah, I hear you. I was just talking about uh, how hot it is here and my pug, I have a little pug and she hates the heat, the poor thing. But uh, we've been sitting, enjoying watching dogs together. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious where you got the inspiration for, well, for both, but we'll talk about dogs first. It was my dog. Um, I, before I was a producer of documentaries, I was a criminal prosecutor back on the East Coast. And I was coming home from work one day and I came across a stray pit bull puppy on the street. Mm -hmm. And that took me to the animal shelter. And when we were at the animal shelter with the puppy, I said, well, dog's going to be okay, right? And I said, well, we'll give it its three days. And I soon came to learn that meant that in three days they'd euthanize the dog. And I actually... I think that was a Friday and by Monday I had turned in my badge and gone to volunteer at the animal shelter um, to help all the dogs there that needed a, a bit of, a, of support uh, to find forever homes. And after doing that for about six months, I realized that for the first time in my adult life, I was happy. And that keyed me to the idea that like I needed to chase happiness with my life. So I actually adopted that little pit bull puppy myself, drove out to LA and through a combination of some hard work and a lot of luck, eventually had some success in making documentaries. And when I had enough power to get a show off the ground, I said, well, let's do dogs. Yeah. Well, I love it. It's so fun. And then I just love the stories of animals. You know, it's, I'm a big animal person. I have two dogs. Um, but my, my family really wants cats, like really wants cats. So they were super excited when I got that cat people screeners. Cause they're like, maybe now you will want cats too. Mm -hmm. Because cats are super cute. So what was the inspiration between, behind um, starting cats? Well, mostly cat when, when dog season one came out, the cat people reached out and they said they would kill me if uh, another season <laughs> went by where they didn't have their own show. I mean, I'm only half kidding. I mean, there, there was a pretty <laughs> large population of cat lovers who were upset that there wasn't a companion cat show. But also, you know, as documentary filmmakers, we're always trying to unpack things and try and get people to look at things a little bit differently. And there is that negative stereotype to being a cat person. Maybe like you're crazy or you're screw loose, you're weird. But the honest truth is most cat people are very similar to dog people. They just like having that unconditional love and, and bond uh, with a very best friend. And also, yeah, there might be some cat people out there who are a bit different, but they're unique and they're, they're cool. Um, you know, it's just like 15 years ago, um, if you said you were going to a Comic-Con, you were like a nerd, right? And now mm -hmm. it's like, how cool is it if you're going to Comic-Con? Can I come with you? Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that was probably the inspiration most of all. Well, that's great. I Listen, that's exactly what I got. I've told people the story of like in high school, I would hide that I read comic books and was into this stuff. And now all those same people that I was hiding it from are coming to me asking like, well, what comic book should I read before this movie comes out? So exactly. uh, 
Exactly. You're exactly right with that. Now with season two for dogs uh, coming, that's really exciting and dropping the same day as cat people, which is also really exciting, but without spoilers of, you know, what you really get into, what can fans of dog season one look forward to in season two? Well, I think we really wanted to lean into joy with season two. Um, not that season one was particularly sad, but we, we noticed that um, the happier the stories, the more people seem to enjoy them. And this was even before the pandemic started. Um, and once we're in the pandemic, it was clear that that was the right choice to make. And don't get me wrong, I don't rate these episodes by you know one to five stars. I rate them by one to five tissue boxes. And we <laughs> definitely have some five tissue box episodes. Yes. But they're happy tears. They're happy tears for sure. Now, when you're filming these, so do you get to go out and meet all these animals? Sometimes, yes. It was harder uh, during the pandemic. We had to have the, the smallest crews possible to keep everybody safe. I actually became a COVID compliance officer myself just to make sure we were following all the protocols. So not so much uh, in season two, but uh, being in the world that we live in in 2021, we become fast friends with these people virtually anyway, via Zoom and social media and otherwise. Well, I was curious if any dogs, and I guess this can go back to season one then, that you met personally left an, an impact on you. Well, I mean, I, there's, I think there's two dogs from season one that left an impact on everybody. And that was Zeus, the dog that made his way from Syria to Berlin and ice the dog in Italy, uh, that lives on Lake Como and goes fishing with his dad every day. And, um, you know, both of those dogs have, are so overflowing with joy and love. If you can make those dogs, your North star every day and sort of try and live the way they live, you're going to be all right. And, people um, who are fans of season one really want to know how those dogs are doing. So we might just be working on something to update them. Oh, see, I love okay. that. I love that. That's what I was going to ask you actually, is if there will be a season that's like maybe all follow-ups or. Anything's possible. I think, you know, in the short term, we just want to make sure that we give people just a dose to let them know that everybody's doing all right. And they are. That's awesome. I love it. Well, another thing I was going to ask you, and I guess you kind of already touched on it, was how how this all changed during the pandemic because you were filming during it. So um, can you talk, I know you said the little cruise, but can you talk a little bit more about the challenges that the pandemic created for you? Yeah, I mean, it. we want, some. these are unique shows in that they're evergreen. People will watch them again and again and again. And so uh, there are other shows out there where you sort of watch them once or twice and you're like, all right, I got it. I can't go back. Um but uh, these these are shows that are a lot of people's favorite shows and they just want to keep reliving these journeys. And so we didn't really want people in masks every episode, you know, so like it was it was difficult to um, have to coordinate schedules to find a time when it was actually safe to go back in, which actually ended up delaying the season. It's been three years between dog season one and dog season two. And we also knew that we wanted to release dogs and cats together, which meant that we had to wait for for cats to catch up to dogs as well. So it definitely was challenging from a schedule standpoint. But look, we're here. We're a week away or by the time people see this, maybe it'll already be out. Um, but uh, it was worth the journey. Yeah, well, it's a, it's such a I love it because I just love feel good stuff and I love animals. And um, so do you have any plans for maybe a bird show or other kind of pets in the future, maybe? Well, I've got one that I know is going to excite you. Um, we're doing another animal show called The Bond that we're producing with Robert Downey Jr. and Susan Downey. I love it. And that is a show that is about our bonds with animals that are undomesticated, that we're never supposed to be pets. And don't get me wrong. These are not pets. These are This is not Tiger King, which, sorry, people love the Tiger King, but that's not cool. Um, these are relationships where human beings and animals were really forced into each into one another into one another's lives to, to take care of one another usually the human beings mostly taking care of an animal who is injured or otherwise needs help in order to survive and uh we're, we're so excited about that show it's gonna be for discovery plus and it'll be coming out probably in you know, nine or ten months or something like that Oh, awesome. I can't wait. Just say Robert Downey Jr. and I'm sold. So you've got me. I'm good. I figure. I figure. <laughs> Susan's uh, really cool too. What's that? Susan Downey is amazing as well. Yeah. And they did that one movie recently that was, um, wasn't it Dr. Doolittle? Like they were both really heavily involved in that. So mm -hmm. yeah, very cool. Very exciting. Awesome. Well, uh, one last question, burning question. If you had to choose 
I know you said you have dogs. So are you a dog person or a cat person? Uh, you, you're trying to get me killed. Aren't you? <laughs> Sorry, I know it's yeah. really hard. No, I've actually, I, it's a cop out answer, but it's true. I've had both. You know, I, at one point in my life, I was a single guy in a studio apartment with three cats, you know, and, you know, I, I was not ashamed and <laughs> those cats were my best friends. The thing is dogs require more responsibility. Yes. So once I grew up a little bit and had, it was a bit more of a responsible guy and, and also it requires a little bit more means, you know, a little more scratch to care for a, a, a dog. So it's a little bit older, had a little bit more responsible, had a bit more coin in my pocket. I got a dog and that dog had that dog for 17 years and um, he didn't like cats. So I couldn't have cats in the house at the time. Now I'm, I have no animals, but I'm almost ready to open my heart to a new friend. I know that that can be really hard. I had a dog that passed away and that was, and as a pup was three years old and that was very difficult. It took us a little while to get over, but now I have two pugs. So well, pug and a puggle. So she's a pug beagle, but it is hard. I know it's definitely hard. They're, they're like a member of the family. They really are. Kids, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. And I can't wait for everyone to see dog season two and cat people. They're such, such great shows. I enjoy them very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Glenn. He was so much fun to talk to. Now, real quick, I'm going to give you my review of both of these. Again, they come to Netflix on July 7th. I can't wait for everybody to see them. I really liked Dogs Season 2, and as Glenn said, he felt like there were maybe a little bit more um, happy, more feel-good stories in this season than season one, uh, and that's definitely true. I definitely felt that way. It was one of those shows that, again, right, you can watch time and time again. Really enjoyed it. Love some of the stories. Definitely have some favorite dogs, uh, and once you guys have watched it, I'd love for you to let me know down below in the comments. I don't want to taint your opinions, so I'm not going to tell you, but there's some really, really good ones in this season. As for cat people, my family, as I said in this interview, has been trying to get me to get a cat for way too long. But I will tell you, watching cat people, like, listen, I used to have cats. I had three cats way back when. Um, I just don't know that I want cats and dogs in the house. That might be a little too crazy. I already have two dogs, Sansa and Khaleesi. I don't need two, or, well, or even one more animal in this house, uh, especially having two children. That totally counts. It's like we have four animals in this house. But seriously, Cat People is so much fun. I love seeing, there's like, a, there, I feel like there's a difference between dog people and cat people. Uh, so um, hopefully you guys noticed that too. And I'm curious your thoughts. But yeah, Cat People was just, uh, it's a really, really great. And I'm kind of, I really hope we get a season two of that too, of follow-ups. Also, as well, there's some great stuff in there. Listen, I, lo I love me a cat. They're so cute. The only thing is I feel like they don't, um, and maybe it just depends on the cat. Maybe I didn't have the best cats. They just don't seem as cuddly as as, as dogs, right? They don't seem as loyal. Um, but it, I don't know, because my mind might be changed, because some of these episodes, these cats are definitely more into their owners than I thought cats would be. Uh, again, if you guys have seen Dogs Season 2 or Season 1, and uh, cat people, by the time you got to this review, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Glenn. And uh, yeah, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you enjoy this content and you want to see more interviews from cast and creators of, of your favorite shows. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters, my members here on YouTube, as well as my patrons. If you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. We have some really awesome perks, including a monthly Zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.